she is a boss lady in her nine to five career but born to a mother who has been a seamstress for over 25 years she develops her love for sketching and fashion her passion is to dress up the african woman in african prints with her touch she has transformed many basic women into modest stylish women she is efficient in her skill well read well traveled resourceful magnificent modest and a successful career woman and a business guru make welcome the ceo touched by ashebi girl ijoma onoha to my channel today Welcome back to Bumpy's Boss and welcome back to today's episode of Boss Up and Level Up in whichever field you are. Today we have a super twist to the channel today. I mean, this is a successful career woman and also a successful business woman that beautifies women with African prints, gives them the touch of elegance with her prints which is known as, her business name is known as Touched by Ashibi Girl. And I'm seated down here with her today and you guys, please, at this point, just get your notepad and take down as much as you can because this is going to be a power-packed interview. This is someone who is coming from the two fields, from the 9 to 5 career field and also having to juggle with a side successful business and yeah, today you guys, please welcome to my channel, the CEO, Touched <laughs> by Ashwabi Girl. So yeah, let me let you introduce yourself today. So okay. who are you? Let's meet you. Hi everyone. Um, thanks, Goma. Thank you. My name is Ijoma Onoha. Um, a lot of people call me Ijoma. Other people call me Adandiobi. Anyone. One and the same person. Um, yes, as Boma said, I own a business um, called Touch by Ashra Big Girl. Um, it is actually um, one of the subsidiaries of the Ashra B um, Girl Limited um, Company. Oh, wow. um, in my other life, I am a saleswoman. I um, lead um, Pan African Sales for a fast growing health technology company in, I guess, Africa yes so that's who i am wow you guys <laughs> you guys the women i have been privileged to sit with are just women that are inspiring to be very honest with you i mean coming from someone who does a nine to five and also does a business by the side so i would like to ask like you know you already have a successful career mm -hmm. right so why the business why also you know juggling business and also juggling your nine to five career as well can i be honest and just say that um really like i think that people do people work um you wake up every day and go to work for a couple of reasons the top two would be one to put food on the table and then the second one would be um, to bring you a sense of fulfillment, right? So in my own case, um, fashion has always been an escape for me. So just a little bit about Touch by Ashra B. Girl. Yes. So um, my mom is a seamstress, as you will call her. She's actually a fashion designer, but she also has, like, she's done this for, like, roughly 25 years. So wow. I sort of grew up in that um, environment. And as early as five, I used to sketch my own clothes, how I wanted her to make them. So I knew that there was something there. And through school and all of this, fashion didn't quite become a business until way like after university, but fashion was always an escape for me. So after a very stressful day, I'm at peace with my sketch pad um, a drink, music, I could do that for hours, I'm at peace. So when I finished from school and got into the hustle bustle life of nine to five, I needed an escape and fashion quickly became that escape for me. So it was like, 
you know, you go do your nine to five, you hustle. And oh, by the way, I find fulfillment in what I do because it's sales. I love selling. So you do that, you come home. And for me, I, I'm very nocturnal. So it's like at night, I can't sleep. What do I do? And then I'm like, okay, let me sketch this idea, this idea. And then gradually, I started bringing some of the ideas to life. Wow. And I remember a friend of mine a couple of years ago, she was getting married and she was like, hey, come and follow me to the market. Let's go and look for fabrics. So we went to the market because again, I also enjoy sourcing for fabrics, touching fabrics and just kind of like thinking of what a pretty plain fabric can become, right? So she said to me, you're pretty good at this because I went to the market with her and helped her pick her Ashwab B and it was at no cost. It was just something I enjoyed doing. And she's like, you can actually make this into a business. And I was like, hmm, let's see. So a shrubby girl was born and it was really sourcing fabrics for men, for women, you know, just doing that bit. And then there was a design aspect and I was like, oh, okay, maybe if I source for fabrics, I can do the designing, you know, I can bring that to life. And then touch by a girl was born. So to be honest, I didn't start touch by a girl with the intent of profits, oh. really. It was an escape and also something that brings me a sense of fulfillment because for every outfit that is made and there's a happy person on the other side, there's an increased level of confidence because as women, if you look good, you have an extra like, layer of confidence on. I have a sense of fulfillment in my stomach, right? So I guess that answers your question. Yeah, so it brings me to the next questions because I'm sure they will want to know Apart from, you know, the business bringing you some sense of fulfillment, how profitable is the business to you? Do you make money off the business? Like, how profitable is it? So someone in here will probably want to venture into something that they say, okay, I work a 9 to 5, but I love to do this. I love to paint. I love to do this. You know, regardless of even if it's not bringing money, I yeah, just love There'll be a time along the way where you will just be frustrated because... You love what you love to do, but it's not raking in money for you. So how profitable is the business to you? There's an extra layer of fulfillment when you get paid for doing your passion. Yeah. So remember, I know I said I didn't do it for profit. So I wasn't looking to, you know, I wasn't at the time I started the business. It wasn't like, oh, I want to build a business that I'm going to 100% depend on. But it pays, it pays its bills. And it's okay. And the truth is, if you look at the growth of fashion in Nigeria in the last 10 years, yeah. they, we have billionaires from the fashion industry. You know, you put yourself in there, your creativity is at its peak. You can actually make money off it, right? So it's very, fashion is a very profitable business, to be honest, it is. Um, Touched by Ashra Bigger currently, like, it pays its bills. It does okay, right? Um, yeah. And I think that if I decided to leave my nine to five today and focus on touch by Ashra Bigger, I'd be okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so I want to ask another question. So why the name Touch? Touch by Ashra Bigger? How did you come up with the name Touch by Ashra Bigger? And I see that you also deal with mostly African prints. Yeah. So yeah, so why the name Touch by Ashra Bigger? How did you come up with the name Touch by Ashra Bigger? Because I'm sure there's somebody here, you want to start a business, you already have a business idea, but you don't have the name for the business. So, but I can see that Touch by Ashra Bigger represents the African modest woman. So how did you come up with the name Touch by Ashra Bigger? Okay. So there are two names, right? So Ashra Bigger was very easy. Remember, we started with fabrics and all of that yeah. so like okay i'm your ashra big girl on demand you know oh, so that was ashra yeah. big girl that was straightforward when i started thinking of building out the part of the business that would now make clothes i kept thinking of one name it'd be i kept thinking of one name it'd be and then i was like what am i trying to achieve right um and then i realized that a lot of women want to look stylish in whatever setting they're in so be it nine to five you're going out on a date, you're pregnant, you're going for a wedding, you know. And I was just trying to think that what is the one word? What is the one word? So one day, actually, this idea came in the bathroom. I hate to sound cliche, but it did. I was having my bath and I was like, and something just said, you know, like luxury, you can, something you can touch. Like when you touch something, it means that it's close to you, hmm. right? So it's like, 
it's it's you're taking stuff from just thinking about it and wishing to actually now be it being in close proximity to you and when we think about our five senses um you know the one that translates you know closest to that is touch, touch. the sense of touch so it's like fashion you can afford um, stylish fashion, you can afford it in your proximity, you can touch it, you can be it, you can wear it, right? So that's kind of like how the word touch came. And I was like, okay, so touch by Asha Bigo. Yeah. You guys, you guys, <laughs> this is intelligently put together. I mean, I also want to ask you, right? You know, it's all good hearing you talk about how you came up with touch by Asha Bigo. It gives you a sense of fulfillment, it gives you happiness, it gives you joy. But we would also like to know, like, what has been the roadblock with juggling your 9 to 5 and also having to build your business as well? Okay, um, that's a very important question, actually. Um, entrepreneurship is not easy. Um, um, and I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of people that glamorize entertain uh, entrepreneurship because yeah. it, it is not it is not easy at all um i will i will put down my challenges or roadblocks to two things people management and time management you've heard this saying nigerian tailors are difficult now in my nine to five i lead a very very busy life so it's like i'm up and down traveling and all of that it's difficult to actually manage people to to sometimes you do your best as a designer, you've done everything and you know, you just need people to do the work and they just disappoint you, right? Yeah. And honestly, like I have cried premium tears. I'm not gonna sit yeah. down here and tell you that um, it's easy, it's not, right? So, so, so people management and time management and they're closely tied together because it's like, I've got like a really busy um, nine to five, um, out from Monday morning. Sometimes I walk through the weekend, but I have to find time to source for fabrics and all of that. So it's been really, really challenging. Pretty much tried different options in trying to solve that problem. Um, for the time management part of things, what I've done is I have built a schedule, um, sort of like a calendar for myself. Yeah. I put a hard stop on my nine to five at some point, it has to really be an emergency. I have consciously also created time for myself where I'm not doing Ashra Big Girl, I'm not doing my nine to five. I just have time for myself. Yeah, I have also important. intentionally carved out time for my family slash loved ones because sometimes you go into this space where it's like you have a brain, brain block, design brain block, you're also very, very tired from work. It happens to me on YouTube as well. Exactly. And you ulti you need to actually like spend time with people that do not add to your stress. To just mm -hmm. And it could just be going out for drinks with your girls. It could be hanging with your partner. It could be anything. But mm -hmm. just find time, dedicate time to that, and then you come back refreshed, right? Mm -hmm. So there are times that I block out for the business and... I'm there, you know, full time. I'm doing everything. The times that's completely for my nine to five. There are a few times that these two things overlap. I could be driving for a meeting and be on the phone, or I could be in the car, being driven for a meeting and be on the phone and speaking to a touch pass or a bigger customer. You know, that happens as well. Um, so you're just figuring out, you know, allocating time slots to different aspects of your life. That's sort of like one solution. We're still working on it, but yes, um, it is the stress. And I also kind of like try to plan um, around that timing. So for example, I'm not going to have a customer coming for fitting um, on a Monday morning, especially if it's a customer that demands my physical presence, right? I would work with that customer to schedule that fitting for later in the day yeah. or the weekend right except you know it's a customer that i completely do not need to be there then you know i'd have my staff handle that right in the same vein i'll try as much as possible not to have a nine to five deliverable on a saturday because that time is for the business that's for the people we leave that to god because every day it's like yeah. you know you try to hold people accountable for work I try to set achievable goals for them and try to track them. So I, you know, kind of like change, switched up my model from paying salaries to like a commission-based structure. So people are incentivized to work 
and they have timelines so it's like okay and i've also come to understand the strengths of the people that work for me so if it's someone that is very good with making pants for example i have no business giving them a bridesmaid dress because that's just going to give me a headache so it's allocating what they're good at and trying to leverage their free time to train them on what they can get better at mm. you know so it's just people management and time management and i and i believe that i speak for a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of people that have the hybrid life of nine to five and entrepreneur you know entrepreneurship like you have to figure out how to get people to do the work and you have to figure out how to manage your time so you don't burn out yeah yeah oh you guys <laughs> you guys you guys i'm learning and i'm sure you're learning as well so before i leave i just want to ask right what's the advice you would give to somebody watching you today i have a crazy nine to five but i also want to do this business you know i have a business idea in head but i don't know how to go about it i want to start sewing african prints whatever it is pants because you make amazing pants beautiful well crafted pants so i just want to give an advice to someone who is watching you and doesn't just know the direction as where the person wants to head right now um the first thing i would say is you have to be very intentional about what you want right take a piece of paper write down so you really want to i mean you, you have to be intentional about the what and the why right so what do you want to do and why do you want to do it right so for example i can say hey i actually like fashion or i'm interested in fashion so that's what i want to do the next question is why do i want to do it am i doing it because hey it's just something i like i just want to express myself from a creative standpoint or am I doing it because my nine to five is not paying me enough and I need added income? So you, you have to be sure. And, and, the, and what that answer, whatever answer you get, and that, that answer is personalized, it's completely unique. My answer is different from yours, right? Whatever that answer is, it would determine what your next steps or what your approach is. If you're, doing, uh, if you're trying to build a business because you feel like you need to augment your income, um, of course, you know that you have to be very serious and you have to mi have the mindset that you have to scale that business quickly so that you can leave nine to five and focus on that business. If you're doing it as just a side gig and it's something that you just enjoy doing as your pastime, you know, you can structure it completely different, right? And then that would be, okay, I structure it in a way that I feed this just three times a week or something and then it keeps going and, you know, and I, I'm not so crazy about making money off it immediately because I'm trying to build something long term, long -term. you know, it's very it's very important for you to understand your why and what and your what right the other thing i would say is that women please be kind to yourself mm. entrepreneurship it's not easy nine to five it's not easy either the world is not very kind to us right yeah. And biologically, there's so many other things and obligations. So if you, if you decide to start a family, you know, if the kids come or if you decide to have children, I'm not saying everybody should or must have children, but if that's your path, you know, you're going to have babies, you're going to nurture your babies, you're going to have this nine to five, you're going to have this business on the side, you know, you're going to have a partner. You, you know, there's so many things you feel like you're being put from left, right and center and it's already an unfair situation. You need to pace yourself and be kind to yourself, oh. right? I was recently speaking to a cousin of mine that was really sad and you know frustrated at the fact that she wasn't quite turning profits after two years of doing her business and i said to her you have to be kind to yourself because the truth of the matter is that the business would pick up be consistent just continue delivering the value that you're delivering one day it will pick up right yeah. i feel like because we're not so kind to ourselves we push ourselves to the yeah. edge yeah. and one day you just need one person to poke you and you just break down just like oh my god there's so much going on there's always so much going on there will always be so much going on but you have to be kind to yourself really i think for me that's the most important advice before anything else oh you guys i would leave you guys by saying please be kind to yourself i know you want to achieve this you want to do this you want to do that but i'm taking the wise word from you know ij today to even tell myself right to be kind to myself you know juggling this and that and that 
But yeah, I'm so grateful to have you on my channel today. Thank you Thank so, you. so much. I mean, I'm sitting down here doing this interview, but you're also inspiring me. And yes, you have a very beautiful home. You guys, I'm going to show you clips of our home. It's really, really beautiful. Thank you. I mean, for someone who does fashion design and all, you should get into interior design. This home <laughs> is really beautiful. You guys, please thank her in the comment section. I'm going to leave her business name on the screen and in the description box below. Do well to patronize and when you do, tell her Bumsy sent you and you just might get a discount. So yeah, thank you all so much for tuning in today and I most definitely will see you guys in my next video. Do well to like, subscribe and share. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye.